I introduce our panelist. Yes. Uh, my chairperson, Professor Dr. Abdul Adi Choudhury. Yes, sir. Dr. Yes. Uh, then, yes. Professor Dr. Rajinam Choudhury. Yep. Yes. Professor Dr. Akiu Miraja. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum. Dr. Razli sir. Yes. Professor Amal from NSVD. We did a workshop with you. And I share with my data with you. Short DAP. Right. Number data. For one okay. month DAPT. I discuss with you in NSVD. Lots of people are waiting for you, sir. So this is uh, 40 minutes, right? Uh, I, you, you are, it's your uh, pleasure, sir. How long you talk, but it's 40 minutes. You can talk more than one hour also. No, 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 no. I don't like to talk very long. <laughs> <laughs> I've got pictures, so hopefully uh, it'll be all right. It, it can take your time. You can go at a slower pace if you want to. Because actually, people are very eagerly waiting to listen to you. Yeah. It's a bit more general rather than anything else. How is the COVID in, uh, in Bangladesh? Not good. Not good. The death rate is very low. The uh, is quite widespread. But the very surprising thing is that in the lower income people, they are not abiding by any hygienic rule, but still uh, they have very little symptoms and almost very few death. All these middle income and high income people, they are the victims. So that's good if you have a low number of deaths. Our death has been quite stable, about 125. Uh, but every day we're seeing about between 5 to about 10 patients uh, on average now. So hopefully it will remain that way. But difficult. It's a very good situation. The situation very good. Well. But in our country, low. You already test only, only 10 to 15,000 per day. But we had 160 million people in Bangladesh. But test rate is very low. So we cannot judge our, ourselves by the test results or death mortality. The point is around 20 to 22 percent of all the tests, up to 24 percent of all the tests are positive. Around one fourth are becoming positive, whoever is being tested. But as a whole, test rate is low. People do not want to test themselves. Yeah. But still, uh, in our hospital, uh, this is a, a single hospital, in our setting also 20% around mm. is positive well, from, from the daily collected uh, number. So uh, it uh, highlights that 20% uh, around is uh, affected by uh, COVID and our, from the test as well. Yes. No. No. A lot of asymptomatic questions. Assalamu alaikum, Rosli. How are you? Um, salam. Hey, Professor Sufiya Rahman. Yeah, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You still okay? look too young. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Where, where, Madam, where, uh, where your wife is okay? Alhamdulillah, you're right. Yeah. Give yeah. my regards to her and salam. Yeah, inshallah, inshallah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank nice you. to see you. Yeah, thank you very much. Madam, Madam. Waalaikum salam. Madam, I'm going to hazy. 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 Dr. Kaisa Nasrullah Khan with us. Dr. Kaisa? Yes. Dr. Kaisa Nasrullah Khan also with us. We have two minutes left. We have turned after two minutes. It's 3.28 now. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, Dr. Kaisa. Ask for Kaisa? It's a holiday. I'm going to take a second. Salam do? Salam do? Salam do? Salam do? So, uh, we... Uh, uh, you have to give time to your family, so they, they want to do cycling. My two little girls. Yes, yes. 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 Y
ডাইনামিক মানুষ সবই করে একসময় তো মেয়েরা বড় হয়ে যায় ওদের পাওয়া যাবে না ইন্দোনেশিয়া থেকে কেউ বুঝি আমার মেমোরি সিডির মধ্যে আসতে একটু সময় লাগে না এটা তো ইন্ডোনেশিয়ান না দেখতে লাগছে না তারপরে দেখি না আমরা অনেকদিন যাবৎ আমার ধৈর্য করলেন বুঝছেন প্রায় দেখা হয় আমি রঞ্জু ডাক্তার এখানে কাউকে আসি আলহামদুলিল্লাহ কাউকে না চেনার কথা না সবাইকে চিনি লং টাইম স্পেশালি Dr. Dr. Prim Ahmad Ali, we are very much grateful to you being with us in the IPDI. Before I start, I give some introduction for the fellows. All the panelists are known to you, but for the, you some little uh, introduction for you. Uh, IPDI tribute to legendary interventional cardiologist, that took Dr. Rusli Muhammad Ali. Mm-hmm. He is now consulting cardiologist, Department of Cardiology, Cardiovascular Central, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. His early years, he is the medical school, 1980-86, uh, an MD, 1986, from National University of Malaysia. He was graduated MRCP in 1991. He works long in the National Heart Institute, Kuala Lumpur. as a different post and from the 2016 he joined here his professional assistant is current course director of asia pcr 2016 co course director of pakistan life course 2016 to 18 organizing chairman of malaysia life 2010 to 13 organizing chair and 
for National Heart Association Annual Scientific Meeting 2015, President National Heart Association of Malaysia 2014-2016, President Asian uh, Federation of Cardiology 2014-2016, Member of Working Committee for Cardiovascular Drug Ministry of Health Malaysia 2002-2014, Adjunct Professor University Technology Malaysia 2014-2016, Appointed as professor in Elenge University College of Medical Science, February 2012 to 2014. Adjunct professor in International Islamic University, Malaysia, June 2011 to 14. Chairman in the Medical Registry of Malaysia, 2009 to 13. Secretary General of National Heart Foundation, Malaysia, 9 to 11. His interest and experts on coronary intervention, CTU, left main, AC ventilation, also peripheral vascular intervention, particularly autoiliac and SFA ablation, alcohol ablation, and TAVI. He's, uh, he's a professorship on different countries. I think Indonesia, Brunei, Thailand, Vietnam, Brunei, Myanmar, China, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, India, and Bahrain. He's, he's a trial long. He's a, I think he's a working and principal and co-investigator of multiple, more than around 30 international multicentral technical studies uh, till now. He's a post director of in the annual courses of USA, Europe, Asia, Middle East, Africa, as a post director and live case operator, especially Europe PCR, EICD, Asia PCR. A great human being. That took Dr. Rosli Mahmoud Ali is a great clinician, teacher, trainer, intervention biologist, and organizer. Above all, he is a great human being. IPDI wishes his healthy and long life. Welcome, Dr. Rosli Mahmoud, in our session. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum and uh, thank you very much uh, for the uh, kind introduction. So, uh, so uh, can I just yeah. uh, start my slides? Uh, yes, sir. Thank right. you. Thank you. Uh, um, can you see my the slides? Yes. Yeah. So once again, thank you very much uh, to the kind uh, Dr. Mohsen and uh, also to my friends for the kind invitation. I've missed seeing all of you. Uh, but uh, this is the world that we are in now, and hopefully, inshallah, we'll meet uh, face to face uh, in the near future. Uh, so I've not been travel traveling out, and uh, and Malaysia doesn't allow us to travel out because once you come back, you'll be quarantined for at least two weeks. So I'm just waiting until this is uh, lifted. So I'm just going to discuss with you about uh, the uh, manual for the planning and management for CTO lesions. This is fairly general, but to share with you also some of the cases so that you can uh, uh, see the need of being uh, you know, knowledgeable uh, in, uh, in doing CTOs. And I'm still learning. And, uh, and that's what, one thing which is very important and interesting because you're still learning in uh, perfecting your technique uh, in uh, PCI for CTO lesions. Obviously, if you feel that... Uh, uh, okay, so that's a lot. My slides does not move. Oh, right here. Yeah. So CTO is really the last bastion or the final frontier. And I think, uh, you, you know, uh, this is the where the difficult part is. And uh, there's uh, a lot of false assumptions about chronic uh, total occlusion. And it is not as benign as people think, because, you know, if we have uh, retrograde filling and it's probably enough to supply flow, it is not true because uh, even though uh, it is well it may be well collateralized, but there is still uh, potential clinical, significant clinical risk outcome. And they are not as benign as what uh, people think uh, in the past. And there's data to suggest that if you treat uh, a proper CTO, you will gain benefits. <laughs> the clinical approach to me uh, when I deal with the CTO is, firstly, we must have clear indications in whom to benefit the patients. I think that's extremely important. You can't be doing CTOs just for the sake of opening the vessel up. And I've seen this happening, but we must be sure that if you were to do something, especially in a complex lesion like uh, this, you must uh, be clear that it's going to benefit your patients. So uh, these are some of the aims of, uh, of uh, reasons, objectives that we do to treat the CTO. We want to elevate their symptoms and they can have angina and even heart failure. You want to improve LV function because uh, any improvement in flow will be able to recruit the myocardium, which is ischemic and, uh, and uh, either regionally or global. And uh, this in the end will also help to improve survival. Now, 
When to attempt a CTO? You, again, we must be uh, justified in wanting to open a CTO. I don't open a CTO, for example, a branch uh, or a distal uh, a significant vessel unless I can prove that the area of territory which is jeopardized is significant. Nice. And you take it that, uh, you know, uh, a, a cutoff point usually about 10%. Uh, and a branch usually doesn't uh, uh, cost or rather doesn't increase in terms or cannot be more than 10%. But if I were to do other lesions and there's a branch uh, uh, stenosis and it's applying a fairly large area, I would try to attempt uh, to open uh, that vessel up myself. But the more important uh, part is to, be con to, be to concentrate on the significant vessels, which are the uh, large uh, epicardial vessels. Obviously, you must make sure that it's viable in a patient with uh, impaired LV function. You want to assess for viability. And if it's viable, then you know that by opening it up, you will uh, help to improve the patient. And when there is ischemia, which is demonstrated. And at the same time, the way on the other side is that your complication risk must be fairly acceptable. And you don't want to be dealing with a case that uh, may not uh, benefit that much, but at the same time, there's high risk of mortality. So this has to be balanced. Now, the other aspect, an important aspect, is once you decide that this patient requires a PCI and an attempt to open the CTO, you need to analyze the lesion carefully. You know, look at the angiogram again, especially for most patients, sometimes the angiogram is fairly straightforward. You know, it's, it's quite clear. But sometimes it can be difficult, especially the ones that has been attempted before and failed. So you know it's not going to be straightforward, you see. So cases like this, you'll be, you have to analyze carefully. You have to ask, is it doable? What is the level of difficulty? Then you've got to think about the strategy and technique and then the potential challenges and also complications that can happen because you need to be prepared for all these uh, when, and if, if ever it happens. So there are certain factors that affects the probability of success and I list all this down. I think this uh, can be obtained uh, in the internet or when you read calcification, tortuosity, distal vessel, uh, the length of CTO, the duration of CTO, uh, uh, all gives an indicator indication that the probability of success will be lower if there are presence of these factors. In fact, uh, for people who actually do CT angiogram as uh, a routine or quite often to assess uh, uh, or analyze CTOs and how to perform them, you can actually have also uh, potential predictors from CT angiogram to suggest that this is going to be a more complex lesion. And they are similar to what you can find on the angiogram. There's also a CTO score calculated by CTA. Once again, it's fairly similar and the higher the score, the higher the risk. But one of the things that has been validated and has been uh, looked upon fairly routinely is by our Japanese colleague. And you know that there's a Jap Japanese CTO score and they look at five various uh, factors, whether the entry is tapered or blunt, blunt being more difficult, of course, whether there's any calcification within the CTO segment, whether there's a bend of more than 45 degrees at the CTO entry or within the CTO segment, and the occlusion length, whether it's long or short, and 20 mm is taken as a cutoff point, and whether that lesion has been attempted before. And if it's failed, and of course, then you know that uh, you'll be uh, dealing with a more difficult lesion. So there are category of difficulty, anything to and more is considered difficult, and this is where you've got to plan your strategy very well. So I suggest to uh, try to use some form of uh, CTO score so that you can note uh, when you make your own analysis and audit in the future. Now, careful assessment of CTO and its feature features, uh, once again, will determine the technique and strategy, the possible success rate, uh, uh, as mentioned, anticipation of complication and risk. But at the same time, it will give you an estimation of the posterior cost. Like it or not, we, in, this, in our parts of the world, patients, a lot of patients have to pay from it. And you've got to think very carefully. What are the risks of failure or success? And therefore, the subsequent treatment. For example, if you want to reattempt, or you have to send for surgery, then of course the cost will be more, then you may even can need to consider cabbage much early on if you feel that it's too complex. If the patient, patient cannot afford 
uh, and has uh, can only for one strat one uh, procedure, for example. But if a person can afford it, of course, you can consider and weigh uh, proceeding on to PCI. Uh, the strategy and technique per se, specifically, sometimes you may require more info. And if we have time, I show you a case where a CT angiogram of the coronary was actually helpful. Then you will also be able to plan your devices and equipment. You have to ask yourself, am I the right person to do it? Because if you feel that it's way beyond this, uh, your uh, capability, then you may want to, have, uh, to work together with a more experienced colleague and quite often, you also uh, collect cases and wait for a proctor to come and help you. So all these are very important uh, uh, clinical assessment uh, when you deal with a CTO. The right frame of approach is very important because I believe that it's very important to uh, plan with only success in mind. And that's why the Japanese are so good because they, they really chip it in. The Americans and Europeans to me have actually uh, um, made things much simpler and much faster, but really everything is success in mind. There shouldn't be half attempts. For example, let me try. And then you fail just by trying a bit of software and so on, you say, give up. That's not fair to the patient. I think uh, you have got to go with uh, success in mind, accept cases that you can perform successfully. You, may, you must know your own limits, or as I mentioned to you, you may want to call for help, plan the strategy very well, and the equipment devices made available. So once again, Planning for surgery at the procedure to be successful and safe. Now, I would like to bring uh, to your attention that it has to be in most cases, if not all cases, you need to think about bilateral contralateral injections. And this is very important because you need to outline the, uh, the CTO. Because sometimes there is no CTO, it's just a functional CTO. And uh, the reasons are very clear. And uh, in uh, one of the cases, I will show you where there's no uh, uh, contralateral injection, and you don't know that you're, whether your wire is in the true lumen or not. So for me, for example, uh, if I want to do, uh, if I were to do a bilateral injection for the CTO vessel, I can still uh, think about six French, but I would uh, be thinking a bit more of wanting to use seven French guiding catheter for better support. And sometimes when I want to use IVERS guided PCI, then I use an eight French guiding catheter. On the other hand, the contralateral injections, I want to use a smaller catheter, especially diagnostic, to try to save contrast. But if I want to attempt a retrograde uh, procedure, then it has to be a six French guide. Uh, and uh, and uh, if I just want to visualize the distal vessel, and if there's a collateral channel, I may even just put a micro catheter inside the uh, collateral channel and then inject contrast from there, just to outline the distal uh, vessel, but at the same time trying to save. Uh, contrast. So my preference, if I have to do bilateral injections, if it's possible, I will do a radial femoral. If I can't, then if a bilateral femoral. And what is important is that you, and this is to remind the young ones, because this is meant for the young ones, is how to inject rapidly. I've seen the injections not being done appropriately. So the inje uh, proper injection will be to inject the contralateral first, to visualize the distal vessel, and then inject. Uh, injection will be Sorry? Sorry? No. All right, so I, I'm getting some echoes. Uh, if there's any questions, I'll be uh, free. Uh, I'm happy to stop and answer. Okay, so I'll just okay. go on. So the contralateral injection, inject the normal vessel first to see the contralateral flow, the retrograde flow, before you inject uh, the uh, proximal. So uh, before you inject anti the anti-grade flow. So this will help you to visualize the length and you know, whether you're dealing with a, a real total occlusion and or whether it's just a functional occlusion. It's so much useful. And it's very important because when you wire, you want to make sure that you are in the true lumen by injecting the uh, contralateral injection. So please do remember dual injection is very important for tackling CTOs. Now, Appropriate guide catheter is very important because it can make or break a case. And these are some of the catheters that I use for the left and right and for normal right coronary artery. Um, I would, uh, for the right, quite often I tend to use an AL guide, either a short unplugged guide or an AL guide because that will give me very good support. So I know that there are concerns with uh, unplugged, but you just need to learn how to uh, you know, maneuver the unplugged catheter. 
and uh, you know you just have to because otherwise uh, you'll be uh, no, you not uh, you will have difficulty in terms of treating CTOs or very complex lesions. Now, long arrow sheaths because some of the Japanese, uh, my friends, uh, you know, uh, uh, some of them uh, would want to use a long arrow sheath. Uh, there is also a, a reason for it because if you have arrow sheath, then you straighten uh, the iliacs and so on. It gives you better support. So you may want to consider a long arrow sheath, though I do not make it as routine for my own practice. Other PCI tools, uh, these are all some of the other things that uh, would be good to have. But really the uh, importance is with the specialty guide wires and there are many uh, different types of guide wires for different ways of tackling uh, or you know, for crossing lesion, whether you want microchannel probing, whether you want to penetrate the distal or proximal cap, sometimes you use knuckle dissection or you use uh, collateral crossing for retrograde and also re-entry and externalization. So there are different uh, wires. Do know some of the wires, uh, and these are some of the differences in terms of whether it's hydrophilic or not, in terms of lubricity, in terms of the penetration for uh, load force and tip load. But really what is important for you is that you cannot be, you don't have to know all the wires. Just use the wires that you prefer. And my preference for guide wires is based on my personal experience looking at the features of CTOs, and of course, cost. remember, uh, the more wires you use, the more costly it's gonna be because they are specialty guide wires. So for example, my preferred guide wires as a starter wire tends to be a filter XTA. I don't even use, uh, I rarely use XT and XTR because if I were to fail it, I may have to use an XTA, so that's another wire. Gaia second or third, or even compressed pro. So it depends on how difficult the lesion to start off with. Other wires uh, that I may use are ultimate bronze and a more stiffer compressed pro wires. For channel collaterals, I can use a Sion wire. And when it's very tortuous, a SUO3 wire. So those are my preference in terms of guard wires. Now, microcatheters are very important. Try to avoid using a balloon because of two reasons. Number one, if you use a balloon, especially the single marker balloons, you don't know the edge, the distal edge of the whole balloon. So much so that sometimes you can push too far and that itself can cause a dissection. Secondly, is that if you want to change wire and reshape your wire, you can't do it, not with a balloon, unless you use an over-the-wire balloon, which is now almost not uh, available. So you want to not lose the wire position, therefore a microcatheter is still the best uh, method of uh, dealing, uh, of uh, in intervening uh, a CTO. My preference are listed be uh, below, Caravel, Corsair, and Turnpike LP, especially with channel deleters. Uh, septal channels, but uh, there are other uh, uh, microcatheters available in market. So you use what you feel you're comfortable with. Strategies, uh, integrate, retrograde, uh, the dissection, uh, re-entry, and all this are considered as uh, hybrid strategies. There are diff different algorithms that are proposed. I just give you a simple hybrid algorithm for CTOPCI. And uh, it looks at, firstly, of course, dual catheter uh, angiography to assess the proximal cap, whether it's clear or ambiguous, looking at the distal vessels, whether it's poor or good. And then you want to think about attempting anti-grade or retrograde and looking at the length. So these are some of the, uh, it, my, our task is not to discuss uh, all this algorithm uh, at this point, because there's lots more to, uh, you know, this is going to take a long, much longer time. Even if you look at the Asia Pacific CTO club, essentially it's about the same proximal cap, distal vessel, and then, uh, and then you look at the collateral uh, presence or otherwise, and you, then you then stratify your strategy. The Asia Pacific CTO club gives a bit more, uh, you know, specific or rather a bit more in detail, the things that you should uh, do in terms of uh, treating the CTOs. So, but what I'm trying, I, I want to give uh, and share with you uh, the next couple of minutes is just to show you case uh, samples of different techniques and different uh, devices that you may want uh, to uh, consider. Uh, and, and some of you are familiar with it anyway. So let's just start with the case of a 67 year old man. And this patient has got very severe stenosis and proximal LED, calcified, very calcified. And there is a CTO uh, just after a large diagonal branch. Now the problem is this has been attempted and failed before and was referred to me. 
And I could see why. It's very, it was very difficult getting into the LED just after the diagonal. In fact, I tried to use a balloon occlusion of the diagonal to get the wire down. In the end, I got the wire down, uh, uh, filled the XT in the caravel, but it was in a false human. And I could see why he failed that procedure because it was very difficult. It kept going into a sub flap. So then we had to look for a collateral. The right side was uh, fairly small and uh, there was hardly any collateral that I could see. It was a small right. So then we looked at others and there it was from the diagonal branch, we could see that the, the collaterals was coming and coming to fill the distal LED. So we attempted to do it. We identified and you know, you inject through the micro catheter and uh, zoom it and to see it very well. So once you've seen it, then we can try. In this case, we use a uh, Sion wire and then change to a SWO wire. And uh, we managed to uh, get the wire to cross that uh, tortuosity. And, uh, oops, let me see now. Let's see, okay, that tortuosity. And you can see the wire going through until the distal and uh, right up to the mid LED. But the problem is, the caravel and Corsair cannot cross because it's so tortuous, it's a small vessel, it just cannot cross. So uh, in the end, we then went back to the anti-grade and this is where you got to do it, anti-grade retrograde. And uh, in this case, we knuckle the wire next to in the carabel and then we push it down. And once you feel that it is down at a point, you shouldn't go too low. If it's a dissection plane, then you are going to extend the plane. So stop where you think uh, you should stop. And then I change this with the field XT wire and you need to check that it's in a distal true lumen. So here it is, you can see the point where the wire is and the point where you re-enter and that re-entry is about 15 mm down uh, from the distal wire. So once uh, that is being done, uh, so that's fairly clear. Lots of other things that happened. We had to rotor blade, balloon burst, OPNNC burst, but in the end, this was the final result, stenting the LED and uh, diagonal. And we have had a one year follow up angiogram and it was still very good. So that's one way of uh, uh, utilizing in terms of the techniques uh, and also the, the, the strategy, which is in, the, in this case, knuckle technique. Then we have a stingray balloon by Boston. And this is a very interesting balloon because uh, it is an over the wire balloon. It has got two markers here. The wire comes out from the distal end, but it has two pots and the pots are 180 degrees opposite to each other. So this is for re-entry. And it's called a stingray because the balloon itself is flat. So once you flat, you're actually reorientating re the, the balloon to the vessel and then you can, you, uh, can then puncture with the uh, wire and uh, then re-enter the true lumen. So this is an example of a mid-LED ambiguous cap. There's a coronary artery fistula. We can't really see where the LED is. So I called the fistula to be able to see, better visualize the proximal cap. And uh, we thought we had it, uh, but it went down and went into the sub intimal flap. So, uh, and you know, there's a term for it, avoid getting in the failure mode. So you can't, you fail, you have to change fairly rapid, rapidly. So about 15, 20 minutes, if you fail, or at the most 30 minutes, then you change to another uh, 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 technique. So in this case, we uh, knuckle wire. I'm going to show you a few knuckle wires, but that's not my favorite technique, I must tell you, but uh, sometimes it's very important. So in this case, we knuckle it down and uh, pass it. And once it's passed, uh, you can see that once again, do not go down too low because otherwise the, the dissection flap will be too low and you've got to stand for a longer uh, segment. So just go to the point where you think that the vessel is normalized and then you put in your uh, a stingray balloon, there's the two markers here, align it, orientate it so that it's close because you need to be sure that you puncture at the right spot. So you need to check in two different frames or two different uh, views. So the balloon is inflated at four and it takes the curvature and that allows you to re-enter into the true lumen. So you have got to find out which part of the out exit port is directed to the lumen. And that's where the orientation is very important. So just take the one, not this one, which is outside. This is the one that goes inside. So this is a case in point, the two markers and opposite each other. We have orientated the, the balloon just now. And, um, and this is uh, the wire I use as a second wire. And uh, this is at the tip. 
And we find that now it's going outside the exit point. Now you can see that it's more medial. And most times than not, uh, that you can feel a gift. I prefer uh, Gaia. Uh, some Americans use uh, a Pilot 400, uh, but uh, you know it's a 014 wire. This is in case it's 0 0.08. And uh, I don't like to use the Stingray wire because it's so stiff and it's not uh, maneuverable. So once you get the Gaia wire in, then, uh, then that's easy because uh, then you external, uh, must check whether it's in the distal true lumen. Once you're there, then you take out the stingray balloon, balloon it, and then stent it as you uh, would uh, uh, normally do. So this is the final results. So that's a different device, uh, 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 a re-entry device. The other thing that you can do is a double lumen catheter that you need to support. Uh, this is a case that was just done last uh, weekend in a different hospital and uh, he, this patient had got an instant restenosis and a total occlusion, very long total occlusion. The is coming off at the pen and uh, you know, it's very difficult. You cannot get a wire across there to go across the bend. So what we did was we wired into the small OM branch and when we wire into the OM branch, we put in a Sasuke double lumen catheter by Asahi. We have also got Crusade. And from there, you put in a wire and uh, through the Sasuke, and then you can try to wire. So here is the case of a Conquest Pro. Once you've got the Conquest Pro deeper, you can then actually take out the Sasuke, keep the wire here as an anchor wire, and then pass a, 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 a micro catheter down. And that's what we did. Because the wire is now further down, we're able to pass a Corsair, and then work our way through in terms of wiring into the true lumen and then this was the final results. This, this vessel was actually 4.540 and it went to about 3.0 in the distal segment. So that was the final results, the Sasuke. Once again, uh, knuckle technique. <laughs> this is a person with a proximal right with a poor guide catheter engagement. Uh, so it will not engage. So obviously if you can't engage it, you know that it's going to be very difficult to try to wire anti-greatly. Uh, we managed to pass a wire down and for anchor, wire anchor balloon, but uh, the balloon was in the proximal right and uh, we could not wire because of the balloon being inflated. So we had to go by the retrograde uh, uh, method and we looked very hard. There's a large septal branch here and you can see as it goes down there the channel is and it, uh, it goes right into the distal right uh, in the PD branch. So that's what we did. We pass in, this is a turnpike with a Sion wire down. Once the Sion wire goes down, we inject it uh, through in the turnpike to identify where the septal channel is and then wire it slowly. You've got to be very careful because otherwise you can easily dissect the septal channel. So you've got to be, you, you have got to respect the septal channel because otherwise you would have uh, caused dissection and you would have failed. So the wire went up but the turnpike could not progress. And this is because the vessel was small. So when the vessel was small, the turnpike was taken out and we dilated with a 1.0 balloon. If I, my preference is Kazuchi or a Sapphire 2. Once you dilate and it's only 1.0 balloon, then you find that you, can, you are able then to pass the turnpike uh, across the stenosis and pass that pen into the distal end. So we got it right up there. Uh, the wire sub when subintimal, uh, the Conquest Pro also could not get in, uh, subintimal into the Iota. I could have actually snapped it, but I wanted to try and see whether I can get it in. But unfortunately, it could not. It was made worse, so I just knuckled it, and th there it was in the uh, Iota. But it's, uh, I was very uncomfortable to try to balloon it. And uh, what we did was uh, we, uh, and the knuckle, as you can see, is that it causes a large lumen. And uh, we use that as a cut technique. So a reverse cut is when you dilate the proximal and then you re-enter the retrograde into the subintimal and back into the intima. But in this case, we cause a uh, knuckle retrogradely and then we try to enter from the integrate with, in this case, with a conquest pole. So this is like a cut technique. So that's where we got it. We got subintimal and then back into the intima. Uh, and uh, that's uh, and it's go down and you want you have to check that you are in uh, of course uh, and before you uh, can dilate the uh, vessel so once that's in we can then balloon and stand as you can see there's a small dissection here where the the uh, 
the knuckling uh, form, but that's fine. That's outside and you've got a good distal flow. All right. Now, you must always check for the left coronary artery before you end the procedure if you do a, a retrograde technique. Because in this case, as you can see, when uh, you know the, we were manipulating the, the, uh, the turnpike, the catheter was actually sucked in and it caused uh, some dissection in the proximal LED. But I did not do anything about it because my guide, my guide catheter was disengaged and it was disengaged for about 45 minutes before we end the procedure. And it was just a dissection and there was no impact flow. So this is a case that the lesion will heal and you don't have to stand this lesion. But importantly, you must check the left coronary artery before you end the procedure for any dissection and also to look at the septal branch to see whether there's any perforation. So it's, this is an important uh, step. Now, um, two other, uh, two other uh, you know, two other, I think we are well in time. There are two other cases I think I'd like to share, or three other cases. This is a 75-year-old man with a bypass surgery done before, had recurrence of angina, and a CT angiogram shows that the right coronary artery is occluded and uh, the uh, graph is also occluded. So the Lima to LED and SVG targeting was beaten. <coughs> this is a CT angiogram and I thought it's very useful. You can see that severe calcification and the occlusion starts from near ostium right until the mid-segment. Uh, and what makes it worse was that for the native right, there was no guide that could sit. So if you, there's no guide that you could sit, then you know that you're not going to be success, successful doing a CTO when it's uh, from the ostium. <coughs> so in this case, we put in a, a catheter, guide catheter in the um, graph, which was occluded. And we wanted to attempt retrograde leave from the graph. So uh, uh, this is a caravel and a wire and they filled the XT and uh, we managed to make it go down. But uh, subsequently, uh, it will not go down more. It, uh, it sort of knuckled by itself and we said, okay, it's knuckled, it's fine. We knuckled it and uh, made it go up. And uh, that was, uh, you know, the knuckling inside the caravel. And you can see that uh, it's now going back retrogradely to the uh, right coronary artery. Um, so right uh, until right in the proximal, you can see the small caravel here is up there. Uh, we had difficulty trying to uh, get the retrograde uh, uh, with Conquest Pro in. So it went in, but it couldn't get into the guide. Okay? I think it was in the, in the true lumen, but not into guide. So in this case, uh, because the guide was not sitting well, sometimes uh, is you can use a guide extension like a guidezilla that you place uh, in front here. And once the guidezilla is in front, then the, you can actually wire inside the guidezilla. And that is like a, an extension, a retrograde channel tracking, we call it. So, but I did not use in this case because the support from the guide was very poor. So I don't think a guidezilla can actually go in. Guidezilla or there's some other uh, guide extension. So we then uh, did uh, what was uh, routine, which is a, a reverse cut. We balloon uh, anti-greatly with the balloon. And then from there, we puncture into the sub and then back into the true lumen. So this is a reverse cut, the traditional reverse cut. And uh, once we got it in, you can see double wire here. Uh, the Conquest Pro entered the guide catheter. And then we push in the, uh, we trap this wire and uh, push in the uh, caravel into the guide and then you change it with, uh, with uh, uh, RG3 and externalize it at the groin. And then from there, you can work from the groin. Uh, and that was the results after. A bit of a aortic root dissection, but uh, that should heal. And that's the final results. So just to show you that there are tradition, non-traditional uh, ways of doing it. In this case, retrograde leave from an occluded graft. Okay, so the other thing is uh, a city guided planning for PCI. Um, so this is a okay, very interesting case uh, by a friend of mine, severe stenosis, and then uh, that's a big diagonal. This is the distal LED, and we can't really see where the occlusion is. There's probably some, uh, you know, uh, uh, bridging collaterals around here. And uh, retrogradely, there was some uh, uh, retrograde to the LED, but... Uh, it's very difficult to say. We can't really identify where the septal channel is coming from. 
So uh, CT scan was uh, helpful in this case. So if I were to take it slowly, this is the LED as you come up here, LED. And then as you go down, you find that this area here, severe stenosis, corresponds to this area. You go further down a bit more, this is where the diagonal is and that the LED is, it's not opacified. So this is where the total occlusion is and as it comes out. So we know that the occlusion is just at a point where the diagonal starts. Okay, so that was very important. So a 3D also helps because here in this case, we find that the 3D shows there's some, uh, you know, channel uh, uh, branch here, which seems to be straight aligning or aligning to the distal LED. So that's probably corresponds to this area here. So a, a bridging collateral, but that is the area that we should uh, try to aim for. Um, so this is where the difficulty lies. So, so you can see the bridging collateral, but the, uh, the actual uh, you know, uh, uh, point is still ambiguous. That's an H French catheter that we use subsequently with the view of doing IVERS guided the PCI if we fail. So we balloon first with a 2.5 balloon, and that was the results after POBA. We use a double lumen catheter, and with the double lumen catheter, we then the one with the wire inside diagonal and uh, the Conquest Pro, then we directed to the point that we thought is going to be where the CTO was. And we managed to go uh, at the CTO and there was not much of resistance. And from there, you just uh, you know, push it down. Be careful once again, contralateral injection, or rather in this case, ipsilateral injection to make sure that you're on the right distal lumen. So in two views, always check in this little two views. Conquest Pro, sometimes you don't realize it. It just goes down and it's not, when it's actually not in a true lumen. So two different views to check that is in this little true lumen. And that was the results before and after. So this is an example where a CT angiogram I thought was useful in terms of helping us to plan the procedure. Now, do not be deterred from reattempting. This is a case that uh, had a proximal right uh, you know, uh, a, prob a tapered right, because you can see some tapering. Uh, unfortunately, my friend who did this uh, did not do it with uh, contralateral injection. He spent a lot of time. This is an anchor wire to, uh, you know, parallel wire technique. In the end, he managed to open up back. He was really in the false lumen and the lumen, you know, the dissection just, uh, you know, spiraled down into the PL branch. So that was in January and he referred the case a couple of months later. Now, interestingly, in the rear time about six months and you can see the retrograde, you can find that, you know, uh, isn't, it isn't as bad. It's not as long. And when you look at other views, you find that it's as if there is a track. So this is where, you know, sometimes you feel you come back and, you know, you've caused some form of injury. There'll be some healing and you'll be surprised that you might actually see a flow which, or rather uh, 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 the channel, the flow that is fairly close to the point where it re-enters, not as bad as when you started off with. So in this case, we use a Sion wire and we got it right until close to the RV branch. We could not uh, manipulate the, uh, the wire much more. And then we took an XT wire and with this, or uh, probably a Gaia wire. And uh, that wire managed to go across, check in two different views that we are in the uh, true lumen, and then subsequently uh, the, the procedure was made, made, made much easier. Uh, a couple of pointers, be mindful of complications. We are not going to discuss complications here, but you know, it's, it's going to take some time, but perforation are the most common uh, uh, complication, especially with the wires you're using a stiff wire, must always see the wire in the distal segment. I've had one or two death uh, because of distal uh, perforation and you don't recognize it. And of course, tamponade that you have got the drain. Um, you must be, you must have a 2D echo in your setup, especially when you deal with uh, uh, CTOs. You, you must be quite uh, familiar with pericardiosynthesis and how to do it. Uh, the other complication that may occur is thrombus. So you must check ACT. I had one death. You know, you are so uh, engrossed about doing it and uh, you can't remember, you can't keep track of the time. And this is where you must empower your CVTs. Your technicians must be strong enough to say, I want an ACT. So the, pay, the person just say ACT is, you know, but you know, you can't remember you saying gross and the patient had uh, thrombus in the left mean stem and LED. And it's such 
um, a shame because you know it is something that is preventable. So uh, you must make sure that someone keep keeps track of the uh, ACT and heparin. So very important. Yeah. So that's anticoagulation. So anti-grade at least 300 uh, seconds for anti-grade, and if you do retrograde, then at least uh, 350 seconds. Limit your contrast. You are going to be bound to be using a lot of contrast. Uh, so you know, you've got to be careful. Uh, try not to use anti-grade injection as much. Try to use retrograde uh, because you don't want to cause this further dissection, especially in, this, in the false lumen. But you have to try and uh, think about how to limit your contrast. And, uh, and therefore, that's uh, the calculated uh, maximum recommended contrast tools so of 5 mils body weight over serum creatinine. Um, and last but not least, think about radiation management. It's been suggested that if you have not made any progress, five grades and you're bought the, the procedure, or if you want to, you've crossed and you've made some progress, but, uh, but it's gone on to about nine uh, milligrades, then you should think very hard about stopping. So to summarize my simple approach to CTOPCI, and once again, I'm still learning. Uh, remember, it's a final frontier, so, but you must be very clear about indications for treatment you must know what you're doing. So you have to equip yourself with knowledge in whatever means that you can. Be analytical in all cases, not just CTO, but in all cases, especially in the difficult CTOs. Study the lesion well and identify features of success and challenges. CTA if it's required. You must have adequate and appropriate devices with made available. Remember, avoid falling in the trap failure mode. You know progress, but you keep on, keep on, and keep on doing the same uh, technique. You can't. You must make sure that you try to change your technique as soon as you can if you're not doing any progress. You know, must know when to proceed or when to stop. And if you feel that you might make a difference subsequently, you may reattempt and you may even consider a different technique the next time. And remember, when you do PCI CTO, you must aim with success in mind. So thank you very much for your kind attention. I know I've gone to beyond a bit of time. Thanks very much. Thank you, sir. A brilliant, excellent talk, sir. In practical approach presentation. Thank you, sir. Professor Abdul, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Push to uncle. Abdu, sir. Uh, please on my video. Uh, okay, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, Doctor Ruslan Muhammad Ali is very yeah. well to us. He has uh, come to Bangladesh many a times. It's not surprising that this talk should be so easy going, but still, touching every critical point. The most important thing for fellows is to see what to do. And the fundamental question should be what is your present level? Which cities you are going to try to do yourself, for which you did a a doctor, and for which you have to refer to certain other center because you expect that certain procedural uh, complication may occur that needs uh, further expertise. The limit that we should know about ourselves. These are the very basic things he has touched on. We really like, I enjoyed it. Thank you, Dr. Rasti Muhammad Ali. We are really grateful to you. I hope there will be a lot of questions from the panelists as well as from the fellows, and we can discuss about it. Uh, Professor Amal Kumar Choudhury. Professor Amal Kumar Choudhury. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Razli Muhammad Ali, uh, for brilliant and uh, step by step, which is very helpful uh, for the fellows, uh, which are the uh, participant mostly particip participate there. there. And uh, also, I like to thank the IPDI uh, chairperson uh, Wadu Choudhury and Mama Mama Ahmed to arrange such a brilliant uh, faculty delivered uh, complicated uh, interventional topics nicely. I like to add uh, one or more uh, things that uh, in our country perspective, uh, we must I think uh, keep in mind the benefit and uh, cost benefit and. Uh, uh, the uh, LV function and symptom relief. Quality of life, uh, is there any quality of life improvement is the need or LV function improvement or uh, mortality benefit is there. 
we are we are we are considering several things we must take decision because we have some constraint to about the cost and uh, hardware uh, facility in uh, um, our country so all the facilities like stingley balloon is not available in our country uh, where is uh, nowadays is gas is, is we are starting use so thank you thank you again uh, rajli mohammad and also ipdi to organize us such a complicated pci uh, related session thank you thank you very much professor uh, lastly yes. uh, why do you suggest uh, for the youngsters to start with uh, sorry what to where uh, you want the young fellows to start with all right uh, i think of course uh, with a cto uh, you should start with a, a short cto a fairly straight uh, you know uh, lesion with a tapered tip uh not very calcified so it's a straight forward uh once you start straight forward and you're able to cross and you do it, uh, more frequently uh then you can actually go up and step and do a bit more difficult so learn with your seniors it's very important or when a proctor comes you can sometimes you can learn by just looking at it so once you see it then you have to try and attempt since you are a fellow you have to do it together with your consultant of course Uh, and this is where the consultants will be able to guide you more but it takes time and as as i said to you i'm still learning as i go along and I, you know every case i'm i'm learning and learning and by uh, by doing that your uh, success rate it improves with some with a much uh, uh, safer procedure sir which the workout wear in your cat labs should be workout wear for the we should must have in your cat lab for the fellows or Hello. Yes. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, I can hear you. You, you ask me. What is the what is the, the workhouse wear for the city wear in your cat labs for the juniors or fellows yeah. should start the wires which wear he choose. Okay, if it's if it's like uh, something tapered uh and uh, I would suggest to use a filter uh, the filter XT or XT wire. It's very it's for micro channel. Uh, you know, you find the micro channel, so it's safe. Even though you one go something to more, it's okay because it's a safe wire. So I think that's the best wire to start off with. Uh, Conquest, I would suggest not to because you know you don't feel it. Uh, again, I I must I'm, I'm, uh, admonish that you must have a, a, a contralateral injection to make sure that you're in because it's safe, but you don't feel it. If you have a blunt tip. a uh, blunt uh, cto cap then of course uh, uh, things like uh, conquest better because it it keeps uh, the uh, the tip of the wire the shape of uh, the wire much better so you got to choose one of the others but uh, uh, fill the xts uh, a polymer jacketed wire is safe thank you sir professor ekum reja sir professor ekum reja do you hear me yes yes assalamu alaikum thank you dr uh, ruslim muhammad ali for a brilliant lecture and uh, learned many things from it uh, from your lecture uh, i to, uh, usually tell that the cto is an art of interventional cardiologist yeah. uh, there is no end of uh, it and uh, there is no straight forward uh, algorithm or straight forward uh, recommendation that uh, we can overcome a cto very quickly so it's a learning process everyone should learn to tackle cto's step by step there is no uh, easy way or very quick way to overcome the cto but still from my uh, point that the uh, cto is a uh, much safer uh, 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 procedure than any other lesion handling in a coronary artery disease but uh, you must be very cautious you must be very gentle and if uh, anywhere you face a problem i think you stop there rethink if required uh, you can attempt it a later days not at that time uh, so to uh, treat a cto is not a must not a must at that time when you are uh, doing an uh, in a cath lab so uh, planning uh, more patients 
and uh, more uh, thoughtful and very gentle to uh, be to overcome a situation. Uh, and uh, gradually, if uh, um, told that the for a junior uh, to over uh, to treat a CTO, there the must be the lesson character first. You have to assess it and then try. Uh, gradually, you can uh, uh, increase your skill, and then you can tackle the more uh, complex CTO cases in future. So. Uh, it's a very nice lecture, and uh, CTO is a endless learning uh, intervention for uh, interventional cardiologist. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank Professor Dr. Chaudhary, I put in something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think uh, for the young uh, uh, cardiologist. Better that you start CTO not as an ad hoc, just doing the angiogram and going for CTO. It's better to look at the angiogram, have a planning, look at the store, what you have with you, what wires, what other materials, what balloons you have, mm -hmm. and then go ahead. And also do it in earlier part of the day, early in the afternoon or in the morning, or whether you are working in the private sector or in the government sector. And also, notify your senior that I'm going to do it when you are doing yeah. that initial piece. These are simple things, but if you are in trouble, you are in trouble. And that means you need help. And you should ensure that the help is forthcoming. It's very important. Thank you, sir. Professor Dr. Najira Machuri, sir. Sir, unmute, sir. OK, hello. I must thank IPDI first and organizer, especially Wadu Choudhury and Dr. Mohsin. And the distinguished panelists here, I thank you all. And special thanks to Datuk Dr. Rosli Mohammed for his nice de de deliberation and legendary deliberation, as he is a legend in this field. Finally, I should say, in medicine, in our cardiology, it should be based on the risk and benefit ratio. The main and best demonstrated to date benefit of CTO PCI system, number one, improvement of the angina or angina variance, number two, improvement of ejection fraction, and finally, the improvement of quality of life. So thank you again, all of you. Thank you, thank you. Fatima Begum, madam. Uh, unmute, unmute. No, Dr. Patima, unmute. Tap, tap on the screen. Unmute. Tap on the screen. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Hello. Thank you, Dr. Mohsin and Dr. Wadud for uh, your nice segment and the Rosalie Mohammed for your nice, very informative presentation. Um, to me, uh, every uh, center have, uh, should have a de CTO dedicated team. And if you want to go to the highest point of CTO expert, then we should dedicate it. We have to give time. We have to make uh, available all the, all the materials and instruments needed for that. And most, uh, first of all, we have to know the anatomy of the CTO. This is the first point. We have to know the anatomy. To know the anatomy, we have to do very clear angiogram, the length, calcification, branching pattern, distal vessel, and the retrograde feeling. And we have to give the dual uh, injection to see the length of the uh, lesion. And we have to give time. We have to uh, we have to analyze, and we have to uh, before plan. we have to. This should not be ad hoc basis. It should be planned. And uh, during planning, we have to. We have to first strategy, second strategy, third strategy. During doing the procedure, we have to uh, start first with the first strategy, fail, then second, then third, and you have to give time. And I think every uh, all operators should not be city operator. All operator need not to be a city operator. We have to select. We have to decide whether I want to be a city operator or not. If I uh, want to city operator, then I have to give time. I have to analyze. I have to. Uh, decide, I have to plan, I have to make available all the instruments. And uh, thank you, uh, 
thank you the fellow who are present here and a one second thanks rosely for his very very nice presentation thank you all our reputedly dr fatima i agree fully with you i mean if you yeah. want to i think for the simple ctos uh, maybe everyone <laughs> can do it uh, but for the complex one uh, maybe a dedicated uh, team would be good yeah. I, have, i have a question i have a question to dr rosli yeah. mohammad can yeah. i can i yes yes sir Sir, uh, dr rosli mohammad you you uh, uh, just describe a uh, case that uh, you go through the uh, venus of uh, uh, graft occluded uh, you you go through the channel through the occluded vessel and then uh, to the native vessel is it a common practice or can we do it uh, uh, for all cases Uh, well it's not really a common in the sense that uh, you uh, it would be good to try and see what they can do integrate but if let's say there's no other option then yes you can still because this graph is has been occluded for a long time uh, but uh, it's quite safe because if you are you're going to knuckle it it's uh, going to remain inside and you just follow and uh, make sure that you it follows according to the uh, direction of the graph and also the native vessel So I think uh, uh, the CTO also. I mean, the the CTA actually helped us in terms of identifying where the total occlusion is. So sometimes, sometimes graft uh, occluded from its ostium. Yes. Uh, at the at the entry. Yes. Uh, at that point, can we approach through this? Uh, you can try. Blood. Yeah. You can try. We can try. Yeah. So Thank fine. you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Arun Maski from Nepal. You also here. and uh, the old mosque from nepal yeah, yeah. please thank you dr uh, rusli mahmudali nice presentations so i was with you a couple of years back in national heart foundation whether you remember me or not i remember uh, i remember <laughs> yeah so it was nice presentation so as you have rightly pointed out being cto is not an easy we need to plan you need to find septal channels we should know your skills and we, which lesions you should try so these are all things we have nicely pointed out so we are not being complex cto's in nepal because we don't have any dedicated cto operators so hopefully some of the young fellows would pick it up our uh, dedicated cto's thank you for your presentation and thank you dr wadud and mohsin for organizing this one thank you dr one question yeah sir real life scenario A 62 years old, uh, minimally asymptomatic because of some ECG changes. He underwent an ATP and found to be positive, but good exercise capacity. And and you can show LAT proximally totally occluded. Circumflex and RC are very good, and grade three down to grade three collateral very good supply. What are you going to do? Injection fraction is 62 percent. I mean, I think. Uh... it's quite often that uh, the the collaterals will not be enough uh, and if you can you try to quantify this with uh, uh, um, imaging modality at a stress echo or uh, nuclear scans and so on so you know how much it is affected but if it's a proximal led and if i feel there is a, uh, something which is doable i would still want to attempt uh, for the LD, uh, to open up the led so once uh, you are you opening it up for the benefits that you feel but you must also remember that uh, when you have an open artery especially an important one like this and if let's say there's any infarct in other vessels for example then uh, you are going to limit that infarct we have seen a number of times sometimes for example the right supplies the led and then the right has got infarction then you have got a double uh, area which is uh, yeah. that can be uh, uh, bad for the patient Uh, we should remember that collectors can provide at most fifty percent of the demand, not more than that. So uh, in that even it costs. So that's enough for uh, symptomless be uh, for in minimal or moderate exertion. But for heavy exertion, the doctor should ask himself. Adequate. And if the provider vessel is diseased, you better open up the CTO because the provider vessel, the collector giving vessel, can be can any time. it shall become disease then then you will have a double wrong thank you dr kalim moses yeah thank you uh, thank you uh, dr rosli actually situ intervention is uh, uh, can be 
uh, analogous to uh, classical music. And <laughs> thank you for providing us <laughs> from, uh, with a, a glimpse of classical music in a weekend afternoon, though classical music cannot be performed and enjoyed by all. So it, it is for the selective uh, few. Actually, there are some uh, problems actually in our part of the world regarding situ intervention. It requires a lot of hardware, and sometimes the cath lab list is pretty long. And if somebody attempts to do a CTO, the other colleagues becomes uncomfortable because they might have to cancel some of their cases. Mm. And there is always a possibility of an operator fatigue, patient fatigue, contrast load, and some complications like perforation, which needs some emergency procedures, actually. So your lecture will definitely stimulate our fellows to venture into the uncharted territory and uh, hopefully uh, with the advent of new hardware the time will be shortened and the procedures will be uh, more uh, predictable actually it is still quite an unpredictable procedure even with the, all the hardware or the an operator experience so uh, hopefully uh, your lecture will stimulate us and uh, the hardware problem uh, remains in uh, many parts of the world. So we, we should attempt to acquire as many hardwares as possible uh, to make our procedures more safe. And as other operators have, other panelists have mentioned that not to attempt it as an ad hoc procedure and not to be attempted by all. Thank you very much uh, for your eye-opening lecture. Thank you. Thank you so much. Kaisal Mr. Khan is the dedicated CTO space in Bangladesh. But to Kaisal, please. Um, Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon to all. Um, I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to IPDI, especially Dr. Wadud Bhai and Dr. Mohsin for arranging such a nice platform and also to Rosli Mahmood uh, for his, uh, such a dedicated CTO lecture where I learned a lot, uh, many things. I think dispersing knowledge and experience would benefit uh, people worldwide so that we can uh, leave our legacy behind. Yeah, uh, um, while doing CTO, I, I asked myself four questions. One is, um, what's the indications? As Rosalie told uh, that, is there any viable myocardium and it is, is it, uh, is, is it uh, important? Uh, uh, the amount of the myocardium at zero per day, is it more than 10 to 12.5%? And is it viable? And to answer these questions, some, it's ideal to do MPI, but sometimes we can answer by simple indication when the tools are not available, like MPI in, in periphery, like is the patient is having pain, is the patient has symptoms, or is ECG has got some small R in the infarct territory, or in ECO, there is a, some hypokinesia. So you can do it as an as an uh, substitute to MPI if it's not available. And, and second point, uh, question I asked myself that, what's my plan or strategy? And I always say my fellows that don't do CTO ad hoc, plan, plan it the, the, the day before it. Plan A, plan B, plan C. Integrate, retrograde, and try to switch your strategy if required. And don't keep on uh, uh, losing your time on one strategy for a long time. And know your hardware. Yes, I agree, we need hardware, but you know, you can do it three or four wires, uh, though all CTOs. You don't need, um, many, rarely you need uh, extensive uh, hard, uh, many, uh, uh, CTO wires, like Congress Pro 820. And, and thirdly, uh, uh, the, the, the important question to me is uh, how to tackle complications. And for me, three things are very important. One is pericardial tamponade or effusion. Second is uh, perforation. And third is um, uh, definitely uh, thrombosis. So I told, tell my sister, don't ask me, do SCT every 30 minutes. And if it's below 300 or 250, you give 2,000 heparin. Don't ask me, it's your job, it's not my job. Uh, so you, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, uh, distribute your uh, duties to others as well in the cath lab. And I also ask my fellows and, and uh, technician to look at the picture, whether you're having any problem like perforation or, or something wrong you're seeing, you're free to talk. And fourth question is very important for me is when to stop. So, you know, long two hours, dies uh, more than uh, 250 or 300, and, you know, exhaustion, then you should stop it 
and call it a day and bring back the city for for a, for a you know after two weeks or one month there's always a better second chance thanks thank you all thank you very much uh, for giving me the opportunity to say something in the interventional uh, platform this is for the first time i can speak in this platform it has been a very good presentation on part of uh, dr rizli mahmood uh, as, as he has showed uh, the step by step approach to cto we feel that if we if we proceed step by step very carefully then even uh, things are simple for relatively novice intermission list to reach the, to a point of doing some simple cto's i have two question uh, i have two question number one is uh while we are planning a patient with ctos and also we decided to do a ct angiogram and then should we keep in our mind about the uh, exposure of uh, dye which can uh, induce uh, dye induced nephropathy because in ctos we do not know how much dye are going to be required there and in uh, ct angiogram also there will be uh, some requirement of dye so the cons whether the renal uh, involvement is a concern in that that case second my second question my second question as as dr reja was saying that doing cto angiogram is relatively safer as as he said as, as i can recall it but on the other hand dr kaisar nasrullah was saying that he he is very cautious about the thrombosis and he asked uh, his his staff nurse to prepare for, for the heparin but what is what is my little experience says that in ctos generally generally there is less chances of thrombosis but the slow flow that occurs in during ctos is probably probably due to the debris that goes distal to the uh, occluded arteries so uh, this point is important as uh, as if we find the slow flow or no flow then uh, what should be there in our mind is it thrombosis or the debris that that has been migrate migrated Uh, I, I have little comment about the uh, about the viability. Uh, the probably the best test for viability is late gadolinium enhancement. Uh, the MPI and the dabutamine stress echo almost they have equal sensitivity and specificity. But the problem with dabutamine stress echo is that uh, if if you have uh, if you have eighty percent of the viable myocardium, then it is it will show some positive response. And when there is a negative response, you do not know whether the segments are viable that you are so uh, that is subtended that total occlusion thank you very much for giving me the opportunity dr rosley is answer okay. the okay so the first one is uh, with regards to contrast yes i think uh, you have to ensure of course a person who has got normal renal mm -hmm. uh, function then they tend to be able to overcome this uh, so much easier Uh, I'll be very uh, concerned with uh, especially the elderly and of course the, the those with risk factors for CIN or contrast induced nephropathy. I tend to allow them uh, to wait for at least two weeks before I, you know, attempt the CTO. So allow at least two weeks of uh, of rest and obviously things like uh, fluids before and during uh, at least about a day uh, before the CTA and also before the PCR procedure is also very important. I still use uh, NAC for whatever it's worth, about 1,200 milligrams twice a day per period, about two days. Uh, then with regard to thrombus, sometimes you know, the slow flow can be due to a lot of things. Uh, obviously, at a point where uh, you are tackling the CTO, slow flow commonly is because of the fact that you haven't opened the blood vessel up, there's dissection. Uh, thrombus may be one of them, but it's not the majority because I think more importantly, once you open up, once you balloon it, you see the flow, then you know uh, how well you go. Other factors of slow flow, there's lots of it. Uh, you know, distal dissection, very uh, very high LVDP, very small uh, 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 branches to support flow, uh, and low BP, for example. Those are all uh, causes for slow flow. So uh, it's not just that, but more often than not, is because you haven't treated that lesion well. When I talk about thrombus, it tested at the other sites. You know, uh, you know, when you put a catheter, a retrograde catheter for injection, for example, what's going to happen there? And in my case, I was actually dealing with uh, uh, diagonal back into the OM, so trying to, you know, uh, get back OM to the cerve, but thrombus actually happened in the LED and left mid. So things like that, uh, that you've got to be careful about. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, last comment from Dr. Dhinavan Mori. 
then go to the like two cases so the demand please uh, thank you uh, uh, rosli sir for your brilliant present, uh, presentation i have a few experience of working with him uh, in national heart foundation uh, he is a great mentor once uh, i entered with him for assisted him and he gave me the chance for doing the NG, uh, ptc pci and he uh, assisted me this was a great occasion for me on um, that uh, time and i was very uh, amazed by his uh, he was a great mentor uh, 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 to me the, he gave a very brilliant lecture on a cto uh, in addition i want to say for the fellows something that uh, uh, Okay, connection. Okay, we go for two cases now. Uh, one is Dr. Muhammad Arifu Rahman. He will show the cases of integrated PCI. Then Dr. Muthu Rahman shows the retrograde PCI. They are, they are both of them are budding cardiologists. They are promising cardiologists in Bangladesh. Dr. Arif, uh, please show your case in on in brief. I think six to eight minutes. Okay, Dr. Arif. Okay, share your screen. Sir, yeah, Pradeep. My screen is uh, visual. You share your screen. Yeah. Can you see my screen, sir? No, no. Uh, Uh, internet is slow. Screen, sir. Is there? The tariff? Internet is slow. Yes, sir. Can I, I see think you screen, share your screen plus? No, no. I think you leave and again join. It is better because I think it is slow. You share your screen? Okay, I go for Matthew case first. Okay, yeah. Sorry, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good evening. I am Dr. Muhammad Arif Rahman. I welcome you to this session. Uh, it's been nice uh, hearing from Muslim Muhammad sir after a long time. Uh, I have my experience to uh, work Your with. Your sound is uh, low. It's okay now, sir. Yes, it's better. Okay. So uh, let's start with my case. So it's a 47 year old hypertensive diabetes smoker male presented with exertional chest pain for five months. His ECG showed STT change in anterior leads. ECO showed androcephal hypokinesia with ejection fraction 45%. Uh, at, at the time of admission, troponin I was negative and blood sugar was 10 millimoles per liter. Then we proceed for the angiogram. It showed. So if we critically observe the angiogram, the LED was totally occluded from the proximal part. We can see here an LCX and uh, the distal part, distal part of the LCX, there was a lesion, uh, 50 to 60%. The LED was uh, totally uh, diffusely diseased and this is, uh, almost uh, occluded and uh, there's speckles of calcium is there. So we, uh, with the great hope, we go in, in the right side and we found there is uh, insufficient retrograde flow from right system to LED. But uh, still there is hope that so that we can proceed to open our LED. And there are a few several points uh, to remember that there is a, a, a intermediate size diagonal is also there and calcium is there and the stump is blunt. So considering all this point, we, uh, we are planning and to open this vessel. Before going to open, we score, and among the stores, we prefer the JCTU because it's easy to implement and it is prognostic value. And JCTU score was a, is a, is difficult grade, that is two. As the blunt was, uh, the taper indoors blunt tapered, 
and, and there was calcium, uh, but there's no angulation. And the good point is there is no angulation. So we uh, plan for integrated approach. What we did, we go bifemoral approach. Bifemoral approach, we take uh, 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 five French catheter in the, uh, to visualize the RCA and the retrograde LED. So it is our retrograde show. Uh, so we can easily see the distance from the uh, stump and the core of the vessel. So it is of great help in uh, while manipulating CTO. So uh, what we did, uh, uh, as those already discussed, the in, in lesions where the stump is blunt, uh, in that case, conquest probe is a very good way. Uh, we also think so. Uh, in these situations, we took the taper in conquest probe where that is nine, and we start uh, integrated approach. Uh, it was, uh, uh, as there is a proximal stump, so uh, we uh, start with a great hope so that it will be in the lumen very short time. So we gradually proceed, proceed, and uh, in the second snap, we see we are very close to the lesion, and in the third uh, snap, we can see we have entered in the lumen. The problem is, after entering the lumen, there was no flow. Even we are in the lumen, we, are, we did not get any flow. So that was, we, we was uh, uh, puzzled uh, whether we are in the true lumen or not. So we just stopped there. There and uh, searching what mistake or what uh, wrong is done in this situation that we are in the lumen but we did not get any flow so uh, we just stop boring and take some uh, orthogonal views to uh, analyze the situation after taking several orthogonal view and uh, we just slowly we are proceeding slowly that we didn't make any mistake after uh, this decaying several orthogonal we found that basically we are in the uh, long track my wrong track that is uh, we proceed subintimally and after some interval, we enter into a very small vessel. We can see in the first snap that we have entered in a very small side branch in, uh, through the sub in, in Due to this cause, we, there was no integrated flow. So uh, what we did now, this, we uh, change our uh, approach. And initially, we thought whether we should take another wire or not. But uh, we found that it, it, as the, uh, there is uh, small, multiple small vessels and it may cause more harm to the vessel. So we, what we did, we just pulled the main wire and we start boring from the proximal segment again. But this time we also take and the true lumen. And we found the, and uh, with the shot in the retrograde shot, we confirmed that we were in the true lumen. And uh, we, uh, immediately after we took a uh, two balloon and uh, we dilated the proximal portion to make it sure that we are still we are in the true lumen. And it may, it is not in the uh, false lumen or it does not help, um, do any harm of the patient. After pre uh, we found good flow to the vessel. And uh, after uh, we also observed the side branch uh, it is also uh, around 1.5 or 1.75 uh, basal side branch. And as it is not a caliber, so we decided not to touch the side branch. In that, in this situation, we, uh, what we did, we just changed the CTO wire or the floppy wire to uh, make the procedure more comfortable and safe. And after exchange with the floppy wire, uh, we took another predilation balloon and gradually predilated the whole segment and, and make the field smooth so that we can enter or as there was uh, lots of calcium also there so that uh, we can put stand uh, cook comfortably. In this situation, we took a 2.5 into 38 millimeter drug eluting stand that is uh, Everlimus eluting synergy stand. And we, from the proximal to mid segment, we cover it very comfortably so this is the uh, final view after implantation of the stand and then we took a 2.75 millimeter nc balloon and pro the lesion so this is the final view after post dilatation so the take home message is a CTO PCI is a fast emerging a subspecialty of PCI with improvement of the situation and experience backup reaches. New art technique and device CTO pieces become very easy. And the success rate is escalated up to more than 
In complex high-risk indicated patient where surgical intervention is not possible because of instability of coronary artery or where very high-risk CT PCI becomes necessary for relief of symptoms as well as prolonging the life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Arif. Like this. Yes, uh, sir. Dr. Rasli. Yeah. Dr. Rasli, few comments regarding the case. I, I think uh, that's uh, fairly well done, a fairly standard thing. And uh, once again, the Conquest Pro is something that you cannot feel sometimes. It just goes through and you think that you're in, but actually it's not in. So remember to always check in uh, the, you know, as you go down, uh, you're not sure, and if it's very close, you just check again contralaterally and to see your direction. And when you think you pass the dissection at the, the CTO site, check again two views. Because if let's say you are in the submittimal and you want to think about parallel wire or re-entry, for example, you do not extend the guide, uh, the, the, uh, the dissection. So that's very important. I think that's very important view. Uh, make sure that you try to get uh, uh, into the distal trilumen as early as possible. And uh, once you've got there, uh, stay, uh, steady the, the, the wire, because sometimes when you, uh, and you try to get the microcatheter to go down, because sometimes you don't hold the wire very well, it goes through and it can puncture the distal end. If you can get the microcatheter goes down, there are two things you need to do. Number one, you have to change to the soft wire as soon as you can. Okay? So once you get through, change the soft wire. And secondly, if a microcatheter goes down, you're in the true lumen, you know for sure that your balloon can be at least 2.0 and sometimes even 2.5. So you can actually save balloons. You don't have to use a smaller balloon. If the microcatheter cannot go down, then you have to use the balloon, the wire, the stiff wire to try to balloon. And this is where you need a much smaller balloon, a 1.0, 1.25, or even at the most 1.5 to be able to dilate it and then to exchange the wire. Okay? So, so that gives an indication. It's very important. Try to change to soft wire as soon as you can. And uh, micro editor tells you uh, what balloon you can choose as your first balloon. If it crosses, you don't even have to use 1.5. Just go to 2.0. Um, you must learn how to use the trap wire technique. Trap with a balloon inside the catheter and then you can pull out the micro catheter easily because uh, it is a very uh, important way because at least when you, especially when you, you don't lose wire position when you pull out the micro catheter by trapping. And then when you push in, you do not uh, push the wire down too deep. But remember, when you pull out the micro catheter with a balloon trap wire, air will be reintroduced. Never shoot. So once you take out the micro catheter, release air. So the blood will come out, air will come out, then you can shoot. Because it's quite often that you forget when you pull out the micro catheter with trap balloon, you deflate when you, and then you inject, then you will introduce air. Okay. Thank you, sir. Next case, Dr. Mathieu Rahman. Dr. Rask, uh, Mathieu uh, doing a, a setting up your session. Uh, when the wire goes to in a false domain, is it sometimes keep it in there and then put another wire in the right track? Sorry, I didn't. I didn't get you. And if a wire goes into a false track, yes, isn't it sometimes helpful that they keep the wire in the false track and keep and give uh, put another wire uh, maneuver it in the right track? because that wire gives you some direction which way it should go now. Right. So you're talking about parallel wire technique. So right. wire and then you can use that. Yes, it's a, a well known. But remember always, when you are in the submintimal, the chances are blood can flow and you can have perivascular hematoma. Once yes. you have perivascular hematoma, it loses of, of the, the, uh, uh, the lumen and uh, that, that, that will cause you to have a much higher uh, failure rate. So remember, Contralateral injection as much as possible, anti grip, try to limit as much as possible. But yes, parallel wire is, is, is needed. I have a comment. Uh, uh, I have a comment that uh, choosing the stent, uh, 2.5, 38 millimeter, I think uh, uh, for proximal LED, uh, I think it is a bit lower size stent. You should uh, choose a higher, higher, higher diameter stent in proximal LED. I don't know, uh, is it correct or not? As the distal segment of the vessel is very much narrowed. That's why we took stent. Uh, before, 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 before choosing a stent, you have to 
give some nitrates there after okay. opening the uh, LED and uh, wait some time and then again you can give a contrast and uh, you can assess the actual size. Uh, otherwise, right. you uh, may do a IVAS catheter to uh, get the exact size of the proximal and distal LED. Uh, 2.5 in the proximal LED, I think it is a bit uh, lower sized uh, stain for a uh, LED elation. Thank you, sir. Dr. Mathur. Sir, even then, after uh, post dilation with 2.75, it, it causes pinching in the distal end. Uh, that's why we also take time to choosing which size will be best. Considering all this, and after lots of discussion, we've decided to take the 2.5. And with post dilation with 2.75. Thank you. Yes, yeah. your generation stand can be dilated up to 4.5 also. In 4 to 2.5 stand. Right, but you know, if you dilate the Pokemon part at up to 4.5 balloon also, I think yes, it can be done, sir. In 4 to 2.5 stand, yeah, yeah. but in dilate the stand up to 2.5, 4.5 yeah. stand. Also. Yes. Thank you. Start your case. Sir, can you see my slide? Yes, yes. Yeah. go. Uh, honorable Chairperson, respected uh, moderators, dignified panelists, and learned audience. Sorry. A uh, brief history about my patient, Mr. Uh, v, 34 years old, Ukrainian, having a history of hypertension and dyslipidemia, presented with CCS class 2 effort angina. His echocardiography is showing a hypokinetic basal mid inferior wall with preserved wall thickness. The ejection fraction 50%. His resting ECG showing uh, there is no evidence of uh, old MI or dynamic ischemia. So we proceed for uh, angiography. Angiographic, right-sided angiographic which uh, is showing RCA is totally occluded from uh, proximal segment and distal RCA not visualized. Left system showing uh, RCA, distal RCA is retrofilled from left system. And LCX and left main free of disease, but there is minor plaque in the proximal LED. So diagnosis is single vessel disease, most likely uh, CTO with comorbidities, diabetes, uh, hypertension, and dyslipidemia. Recommendation was PCA to RCA. We did JCT score, and score was one which consistent with intermediate difficulties to deal with CTO lesion. So what should be the plan of management? Our plan is PCA to RCA. The challenge it has to overcome to deal with the situation, guide cat selection, guide web selection, which approach we approach we choose, either integrate or retrograde or combination of integrate and retrograde. As dual injection is necessary uh, for situation, so we choose uh, AL17 friends guide cat for RCA. Uh, through right femoral approach and uh, hyperion SPP uh, six friends for left. And dual injection showing uh, distal RC is well visualized. There is uh, a branch in the distal cap and proximal cap is tapered and definitely it is a long segment lesion. Uh, there is no angiographic feature of calcification. So we, which approach will uh, go fast, either integrate or retrograde. As the proximal cap is uh, taper and uh, there is no angiographic feature of calcification, 
in the CTU segment. So we first approached integrately. We took CONWAR with the support of Caraval, uh, tried to negotiate the lesion, but after several attempts, we cannot negotiate and penetrate the lesion, but there is a dissection, we can see a dissection flap. Then we switch the Sion wire to Sion black and try to negotiate the lesion. After several times, always Sion black goes in the false track. And Caraval is advanced uh, along the track and wire is taken out. We took a shot for tracking evaluation, but it was in the false track. So we kept the Caraval in the proximal RC. So what should the next step? Definitely we failed to uh, negotiate, to um, cross the lesion integrately. Uh, we then switched to retrograde approach. We took a shot by left caraval in the mid-septal branch to evaluate the collateral channels. There is some collateral channel connected with the distal uh, RCA. We took C and blue with the support of caraval 150. Try to uh, negotiate and cross the collateral. C and blue, uh, C and, uh, wire is negotiated, but not in the main track. and didn't cross the collaterals. So we switch the wire to SUO3, which is a very versatile uh, wire to cross the collateral channel, especially tortuous collateral. And ultimately we succeeded with SUO3 and now we're in the distal RCA. Caraval is advanced to the distal RCA through the collateral channel. Suthi wire is taken out. Here, uh, you can see the distal right and tip of right and left caraval uh, in the tip of uh, both cap, both proximal and distal cap, which indicating this is a long segment lesion. And we took a shot of distal RCA uh, through left caraval to see the characteristics of distal cap. Distal cap is tapered and there is a branch in the uh, near the distal cap. So we tried to penetrate uh, the distal cap with C on wear, but several times we're trying, but failed. And then we took ultimate bros three. And ultimate bros three, finally we negotiate and penetrate the lesion and cross the lesion finally. Now we're in the ultimate bros were in the aorta and Caraval is advanced to the aorta and ultimate bros was taken out, keeping the Caraval in the aorta. Seen blue is entered into the L and plots uh, the right, right side guide cat with the help of Caraval after several attempts. You can see now we're in the scene we're taken out, keeping the Caraval within the L1. Now we exchange RJ3 word. and externalized through the RC guide cat. Now, the lesion is pedilated with the uh, NC2.5 15 millimeter balloon with 12 atmosphere. After pre-dilatation, 3.5 into 48, a long stent, uh, drug eluting stent we choose and uh, deployed covering osteoproximal RC.
the well expansion of the stain post digestion done with 4 into 15 uh, nc balloon with uh, 12, uh, 14 atmospheric pressure now caraval is pulled to led and we took a shot there is no perforation or dissection in the septal collaterals. And both sided caraval is negotiated to head-to-head, uh, uh, -head, a, position, a position to head-to-head -to, -head to remove the RJ catheter to avoid the uh, injury to the collaterals and the cell RC. After removal of wire and caraval, we took a shot, there is no dissection or perforation in the collaterals. And this is the final result. So take home is situation always challenges for interventionist. Option should keep open with appropriate hardware and operator experience. Slow and steady key to success of C2 intervention. Step-by-step -step approach will enhance procedural success and avoid rape complication. It should be ensured that uh, we're in true lumen before balloon or stand deployment. We, I would like to acknowledge my mentor, Dr. Uh, Momini Jaman sir and Kaisan Nasrullah Khan sir, giving me the opportunity to uh, present this case. It's such a nice gathering. And uh, I would like to pay thanks to Dr. Fatima Begum, um, my consultant, he, uh, for guiding me. And thank you all for patient sharing. And thank you, IPDI, giving me the opportunity to present this case. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent case. Dr. Rusli Mahmoud. Yeah, I, I like the case, but I like your final comment, which is never balloon unless you show inside the, inside the, uh, inside the true lumen. And that's very important because otherwise you can cause a dissection and worse, you can cause a perforation. And I had, I remember seeing one patient uh, that was sent to us and uh, the, he caused a perforation because he ballooned what he thought was inside the true lumen. It's not inside the true lumen. So that caused perforation. So instead of uh, coiling it, uh, he put in a stent, which is worse, isn't it? Because you are now keeping the, the, the uh, vessel open. So the teaching is really, you have to ensure you're in the distal true lumen before you take a, a pull up balloon. I think that's a very important comment. At least they have to orthogonal view and quadrilateral view. Yeah. <clears throat> I have a question to uh, uh, Dr. Rosli Muhammad. Yes. Uh, my uh, recent experience that uh, I uh, was uh, doing a retrograde approach, uh -huh. I uh, negotiated the wire uh, up to the right coronary artery from uh, the through septal. Mm. But unfortunately, I cannot negotiate uh, my caravel or my cocatheter through. Uh, this uh, channel up to the right coronary uh, lesion. That's why I cannot exchange the wire and I cannot cross the right coronary uh, stenotic segment and I have to abandon the case. Uh, in that case, uh, actually I try to dilate the uh, uh, septal branches uh, with 1.25 balloon but still I cannot negotiate the uh, microcatheter through this uh, channel. So what should be the uh, choice, next choice? I failed it. Well, number one, uh, uh, as, you, as you rightly pointed out, you need to know what's the cost for not crossing. Uh, tortuous vessel, small vessel. Yeah, a small vessel, uh, yeah. And quite often, if it's fairly straight, uh, the wire straightens it out, uh, you can try to dilate with 1.0, 1.25 gently, and then try to get it uh, up. And uh, and quite often it goes, but sometimes you, you can't. This vessel is yeah. just too small or too tortuous. Now, I find that, number one, uh, there are various microcatheters, but uh, the microcatheter, which is very would be either a, a, the turn, turnpike LP or to a certain extent the Corsair because Corsair you can turn it but the Corsair is slightly bigger. The turnpike LP is small, very tapered tip and you can actually twist and turn and you know hold the wire, twist and turn for it to go down. So it's better. You can't do that with a caravel 
And the reason is because caravel, if you do that, the tip may be uh, broken off uh, and, uh, you know, and it's been left there. So not with the caravel, but Corsair, uh, with a turnpike LP teleport, yes. But to me, still at this point in time, I find that the turnpike is very good. So that's number one. Then uh, you also need a good guide. So the guide must be good for you to be able to do the retrograde because if the guide is not good, you cannot push. Sometimes what you tend to do is you can also do uh, anchor wire uh, down the, for example, LED, or sometimes you can just put inside the diagonal and you balloon inside the diagonal. Uh, so that's an, uh, uh, an anchor balloon. So that sometimes help. If you can't, then you have to abandon that place and try to find another separate channel. So that's, uh, that's uh, the only sad part about it. But you know, you've tried a long time, you cannot go through. It, all those things cannot work. You just have to try another subject. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I have a comment for uh, the last case that uh, they tried to uh, cross the uh, channel, small channel by Sion Blue. Why? Why not uh, XT or something like that? Which is more easier to talk. I suppose, uh, uh, you know, my preference, and it's been said, it's uh, Sion. Sion is, the tip is a bit stiffer than Sion Blue. Uh, but you maintain the tip. Uh, it's a 014 wire. But the body is softer. So Sion Blue, the only thing is, of course, in this case, it was successful. But the body of the Sion Blue is a bit more stiffer. It has got better support. So sometimes to try to negotiate the separate channel may be more, more difficult. You can still use it, but sometimes you may not be successful. Uh, hydrophilic, or rather the polymer jacketed, like the 008, uh, you know, the filters, uh, XTR, uh, fill the black, of course, uh, Sion Black is a bit bigger because it's 014, can also be used. Uh, but you just have got to be a bit careful when you use a, a polymer jacketed, in this case, it's very sl uh, sleek and slippery. It can go down, but at the same time, it can co also cause a dissection. So very, talking about very small areas here, very small uh, uh, and tortuous vessel. So, I, to me, what I believe is that you choose the one that you feel you're comfortable with, that you have worked and you know the feel. That's very important. There are certain wires, of course, you cannot use. Lah, eh? For example, a stiff wire, and you, you can't use that. But do what you use, you feel that uh, it's comfortable, that you have had uh, chance, some chance before. And at the same time, I would suggest that uh, also try to experiment with other wires that in the end might suit you best. Thank you. Last comment from Dr. Kaisal Rasulakhan. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. Uh, just, just to, just to um, uh, second the case which uh, was thrown by Motu last case. Yes, usually when we, we, we cross septal, we prefer Sion wear, and then if it's tortuous, then we switch to Suo because Suo is very easy to take curves, but though it is easily distracted the tip, so you have to handle very carefully. But if it's tortuous artery, sometimes. Uh, I, I also use filler XTR or uh, Sion Black, but you have to be very careful because this can perforate very easily. And especially in the epicardial channel, uh, try to avoid the polymer jacket wear. Thanks. Professor Subhiraman, Madam, Madam uh, Professor Subhiraman with us. I think technical problem, you disconnect most of the times. Professor Subhiraman, please. Last yeah. comment, then go for what is said. Most of the time I was disconnected. Uh, yeah, the last time also you are there, I had the same problem. Uh, I was disconnected from the, uh, from the beginning, uh, middle, and then I was connected later. But I, uh, now I called my daughter and got her mobile, and from, to, uh, from her mobile, I'm just doing it. I'm asked, uh, thank you, thank uh, you. Rosalie, as, as usual, has presented very nicely and highlighted the point. I read the clinical implication, how to select, how to uh, do it, and what to do it. But at the end of the day is that uh, um, to do the CTO, I remember when I, in my young age, when I went to learn the CTO in Japan, uh, I, uh, the father of the um, interventional cardiologist, Professor Saito, he used to do it so simply, and there must be some magic in his hand, but anyway, uh, learning there when we came back and did a lot of uh, first CTO in Bangladesh by me and then we did a lot um, and you know that as a mother of the interventional cardiology in Bangladesh I did a lot of work the first time but it, I kept on transferring the technology to my juniors my colleagues 
and uh, nice to see um, the, all of you are trying to do this CTO is the main is the intention and dedication and you have to have the patience and uh, from the beginning if you go step by step as he has highlighted then uh, you know you uh, you'll have a very less chance to have uh, unsuccessful you can be unsuccessful but it's rare but if you select the case then select the tools and say uh, do it uh, as as you are used to and take the wear what is the wear which is friendly for you and you are used to it and then you can do it whether it's retrograde or integrate the case presentation also is, uh, he has presented previously also one case in one another webinar is is, is done this time also very well so I, I hope those who are trying to do the CTO, the main thing is that uh, all of can do us do it, but it's a patience and have to be there in the lab and you have to know when to start and you have to know when to stop. The stopping is the main main thing uh, because after some time, if, you, if you, either you land up in complication or you land up in uh, not uh, be successful, even if you are not uh, complicated the case. So you can uh, pack it up, you can do it again, or you can ask the help of your colleague, or you can change the tools to be successful. I'm sure all of you have uh, learned a lot from it. I've also, again, had, uh, I've seen all these, and I'm also glad that um, Rosalie has uh, been with us for a long time here now, and he has I think she has lost the connection. Fatima, you uh, last Help comment. Us to a lot. I hope uh, Professor Udud Moshin, uh, thank you personally again and again for arranging these meetings and giving me the opportunity also to talk to you and see all of you. So I wish Thank all you. the success, whoever is doing it, I'm sure you will do it because you need the dedication, you have it, you got the intention, you have it, and you have to be the patience and be successful. Thank you, Rosalie, again. I hope to see you sometime. And uh, all of you who are uh, present today as a, in this uh, program, thank you very much. All I wish everybody's good health and stay safe, stay strong. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Fatima Begum, uh, Madam, uh, last case with your comments. Please unmute, Madam. Thank okay. you, Motiur, for your nice presentation. Uh, he presented very nicely, and every step you mentioned very uh, shortly, but uh, precisely shortly, but correctly. He presented nicely. We have uh, CTO dedicate uh, dedicated operator Kaiser Nasrulla Khan. When I uh, when I uh, fail to pass or, or, or uh, when fail to do CTO, then I call Dr. Kaiser came to me to help. So I think if if you want to uh, get successful, then we need to uh, uh, CTO operator dedicated CTO operator that is two experienced operator and with helping and dedicated specialist or helping and then uh, when, uh, every person should have the uh, mind to set up mind that he will be a city operator and uh, go, he will get the highest uh, expertise. This is the tool, uh, this is the, uh, my, my comment to fellow were observing the uh, session. You, you have to be patient. You have to be careful, you have to be done step by step, and you have to set up mind that I want to be a city operator, and you have to uh, show the dedications for that. Thank you very Thank much, Rebjorn. We are passing uh, around two hours' time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank expert panelists. Thank you, Mr. Mahmoud. I think we are so much enlightened with this lecture. I think juniors are, I think, more uh, dedicated to the city. Professor Wadu, sir, please come to the session. Wadu, sir. It's really our pleasure that we have uh, someone like uh, Dr. Rosalie among with us. Uh, he's not only a good operator, but he's also a good teacher. And that's not very common. Many people know so much, can, can communicate that well. But Dr. Rosalie always choose simple words, specific, very precise instruction. And with ample examples, he can uh, actually teach us 
what to do and what not to do. Uh, we have seen the evidence today again. I do hope that we will get to uh, listen to him for many more lectures. And as the corona situation is going on, I think we have to resort to this uh, remote learning more and more. And Dr. Rosli, we do hope that we'll, listen, we'll get the chance of listening to you some more time. And again, from IPTI, uh, from myself and Dr. Mossin and from, from all the panelists and the audience, thank you again. Dr. Rosli, sir, do you have any comments? Dr. Rosli, Mohammed, Dadu, Dadu, last well, comments? Like, yeah, I've commented in my chat, uh, so, so I, I'd, like, I'd like to say thank you once again for the kind invitation and, you know, uh, it was quite uh, challenging to try to find the time, but uh, in the end we got uh, together. And uh, really, I've missed all of you, and uh, and I hope to see all of you again. And but of course, work has to go on, and uh, we hope that we will improve, our, improve ourselves as we go along. So thank you very much. Thank you. We are so much grateful to you, sir. You, sir. I thank Bixingo Pharma. We are even just talked for last three months with us and in this program, Bixingo, and also Boston Scientific. We are uh, also technical support to us. Thanks everybody. Thanks uh, everyone being with us two hours. Uh, our next program on the month of September. There are two speakers with us. On the 5th September, Dr. Tan Hinchim with the Pythagorean lesson. And also another speaker, Dr. John C. George with the IVAS technology. I think uh, Fellows are evaluating this. Thank you, Dr. Rosli. Being with us, thanks again. Assalamu alaikum. See you, Pashti participants, again on the 5th September at 3 o'clock on Saturday. Till then, goodbye. Allah peace. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Alaikum assalam. But the time is not very uh, suitable 3 30 mm -hmm. to 5 p.m. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, Mashin. Yeah, uh, it is very difficult. Sorry, I, I had to, to choose that because Saturday I couldn't be in Saturday, so Friday was the best chance. So, the lecture choice. It is the choice of the speaker choice because it's so much busy. Doctor Rosley, Doctor Tan, so much busy schedules. They we are grateful to them to time on Saturday or Monday anything because it's a great opportunity for the fellows or consultants being with them. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, uh, Mosin Ahmed, can I talk a minute? Uh, yeah, I would yeah. like to invite all. To our very renowned and uh, very uh, de uh, de dedicated and very delightful Professor Amul Kumar Choudhury in his BCIC first uh, conference, I think, in 5th of September. Now, Amulda? Uh, Amulda? So, I can doubt that. Doubt then. He's invited in uh, 4th September, Friday. I talked with right. Marjin and Marjin also doing work in front of me. Uh, the, uh, I, I think he's the one of everybody. Everybody from Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Uh, he's launching his first program. I think basic of PCA, no? Uh, yeah, the, I, sure. Dr. Rosli, you can go goodbye. Right, uh, thank, yes. you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Bye, yes, okay. okay. Bye, bye. 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 Unbelievable. Okay, okay, go ahead. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Thank you, madam. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Morning and uh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. I had some problem in transmitting yeah. see it, but nevertheless, um, I could see it. I'm sure you'll uh, do the next one. We'll have no problem. Uh, take <laughs> care <laughs> of yourself. <laughs> 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 September lecture on the Meshka sir. Still or one of the one of the uh, research person you will speak on uh, evolution of Singo on the 8th September for the fellows. 
syncope is the most important topics for the cardiology yeah 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 the, the, the date on the 8 september sunday sunday our sun, sunday time mohin ar dr otud ar professor amol humai nagi mone hoy na to <laughs> they are so busy with all the webinars every day ami to koto bar dekhi gondogol lege jay ekhon bhabchi ekta alada chart kore थैंक <laughs> <laughs> थैंक यू भलो देखिए मधुसर मधुसर सलाम को ओके रंजू चले गए से ना कि थैंक यू